that's that's important. Uh, Chris Gleason, WCSN. Coach, one of the consistent parts of the season, uh, Merlin Roberts and Darian Butler, freshman players like that making big plays. Um, what did, how much do you think it helps lay the foundation for your team when you see freshman players having an impact week to week? Well, it's important when we recruited those guys along with Lowley and um, Rashari. Now, Rashari gets maybe not as much credit because he plays in the back end, you know, and He's had a couple seconds. He's dropped two interceptions that he should have by now. But if he has those two, you guys are talking about him too. Um, when you're trying to build a program, you never imagine that you have four freshmen that are going to play a lot. Three of them are starters. It's credit to them. Credit to their coaches. Um, them being good enough to, to play. It's hard for freshmen to come in and play. These guys are talented, but they like ball. Uh, they're, I mean, they are all in. They're like my sons. I talk to them every day, and I told them, I said, this is going to be your football team. You're setting the foundation of this now, and you got to understand it. And uh, they understand how hard it is, and they make some mistakes, but the effort and just liking ball, I mean, just studying ball on the computer, just doing it when they're not in, the, when they're not in this office, in this building, the questions they ask, they want to get better, and um, it helps you when you recruit. The kids see those freshmen playing, they say, they actually, the actual coach said they can play. If they're the best player, they're going to play. I said that when I took this job. It's competitive. You have to compete. If you don't want to compete, wrong university to come to play football. You're going to compete. And uh, you're weighed on your performance. Because in the real world, that's how life works. And if we're going to teach life skills that, that come from playing football, they all apply. you got to learn that. You gotta come to work every day. You gotta, you're a student athlete, you gotta make sure you handle that part. When you come and put your stuff on the grass, you gotta go compete. They know it, they flat know it, and if you don't do it, you'll stand on the sideline with me and watch. And that's how it works here, and they know it, and I, I think they, they, they're buying into it. And I think the more young guys that play for us, and people watch us play, they're gonna go, coach will give you a shot, he'll give you a shot. If you're a good player, he's gonna let you play. And that's how it's gonna, that's how it's gonna work around here. Jeff Metcalf, Arizona Republic. Um, you mentioned moving the keel around. Um, just generally, how would you evaluate Rob Likens and, and how it's working in terms of his play calling and, and just what he's doing with the offense? You're not trying to get me into that Hugh Jackson situation, are you? Hugh's <laughs> <laughs> a good friend, by the way. That's terrible what they did to that man. It is. It is. It's, it's not right, but it's whatever. I'm a college coach now. You know, Rob is like anything else. I mean, he's like any coordinator. Um, he was a wide receiver coach here last year. Now he knows the players some, but you know, it's 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 easy to call the plays when you're playing PlayStation. No, but when you walk out in the yard, you're the play caller, and you sit up there, and when it doesn't work, the fans go, "Wow, what a bad play!" Well, there's a lot that goes into the play. We actually practice plays at work. We really do. We go to work every day and we practice plays we think is going to work. And sometimes the teams just beat you. They're, they just they defending the play. Or sometimes, and we'll never do this because this is what coaches do not do, and, and I won't tolerate a coach ever to do this. You don't blame the player for not doing it right. You ever seen a coach do that at the press conference, by the way? They don't do that. You sit there and you take the blame as a coach. Now, in the meeting room, you tell the players, hey, look, Got to execute this better, got to execute that better. We said players have made mistakes. Have we ever named one? And we won't. That's not our job. Our job is to fix it. And that goes along with the team. It goes along with your, with your ability as a coach to understand that we have to fix the player. And is it too complicated? That's the first question you have. Are we putting the player in position? Where he can succeed, or we put him in a position where he's going to fail. Well, we got to figure that out. Now, with that being said, it's part of the player's responsibility to understand what he needs to do. And sometimes they forget. Sometimes they go the wrong way. We say left, they go right. Okay. We never say that. We just say, mm, it's on us. And that's how it works. So I just think that's the, res that that's the respect that and the coach and player have to have for each other. And that's how it works in sports. It always works that way. So. 
you know, as much as we want to say, is it the play caller? Is it the design of the play? Is it this? Is it that? We could get into all that, but it's it's about execution. And sometimes, hey, you call the wrong play at the wrong time, and they defend it. And sometimes they're better than you on that play. And then sometimes you actually put them in a bad situation. And and I've had our coaches, Danny, special teams coach, Coach Likens, after the series, said, Coach, I put them in a bad spot. I said, that's okay. I've always told players this. When a coach puts you in a bad spot, bail him out. Go make a play. Just go make a play. This, it, yeah, we could have put you in a better defense. We get that. We could have made a better call. We get that. But this is the call. And what you can't do as a player, you can't leave the huddle thinking this is not going to work. Because then we're all messed up. You just got to go play the play. Let everybody do what they do. And, you know, it works out. So that's kind of where I'm at. I've been doing this too long, I guess. That's just me. I learned that when I was a player and from Dick Vermeer. You know, just learn stuff and you go, okay, that's that's a good football coach there. Because he gets it. And you know, when you've done it as long as I've done it, <coughs> just take it for what it's worth. That PlayStation makes everybody a play caller. It's great. Uh, Herm, you had a couple guys uh, go down Saturday, DJ Davis and Jalen Harvey. Is there any update with those guys? Uh, Davidson's he's probably going to be done this year. Harvey, we don't know. We see, 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 he's got a chance to come back this week. But DJ, that's, that's a that's a big blow too. He's playing well, you know. Yeah. The good part is he's got some football left, and um, but we're going to miss him. That's that was that was a tough one. So we got to shuffle some guys around a little bit, but we're okay. That's where your depth comes in. You know, you got to have depth. When we have some guys, we move some guys around, and we never know. We might have another freshman show up this week. You never know. Because that's all we got. We don't, we don't have anybody else. <laughs> they get to play four games, so we're okay. Coach Colette Stein, Cronkite News. You just recently were interviewed by a former colleague and friend from ESPN, Dave Stevens. Yes. What are your thoughts on all he's accomplished and the adversity that he's overcome? Dave is a... Uh, Fabulous man, and um, spent a lot of time there at the Worldwide Leader with him. I remember going in and meeting him uh, when I first took the job. And uh, he's a talented person, you know. And uh, when you think about sometimes things that happen in your life, uh, you can use those uh, as a way to feel sorry for yourself. He's never done that. Uh, he's always been in the lead, positive guy. And um, I was glad I got to see him again be quite honest you know it's, it's kind of fun when you see people that that uh, have touched your life in, in a certain way and he's all he was always positive when I first took that job he's one of the first guys I met and he was always positive energetic kind of guy and uh, told him anytime he needed me I'll be here for him so it's good to see him thanks for asking that question from Chris Cartman son of a source you mentioned earlier the similarities that you see with uh, Utah to Stanford and Michigan State so what lessons do you take from that that those games earlier in the year? Well, I take this: you better be physical. Um, you're gonna and it starts at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. Defensively, we have to tackle well. We're gonna have to really tackle really well because they they make you tackle with the back end of your defense. Your corners are gonna have to tackle. You know, the safeties they always have to tackle. They put they put stress on your corners uh, because the way they block it up. Um, they're always going to have one guy free. And, and you know, any, anyone who wants, runs, wants to run the football, whether it be with the quarterback too. Now, the quarterback stresses you out as well because now all of a sudden you got to get that safety out of the middle because if they run the option. He's the guy that's got to run the alley. Um, but the runner, when, when you get eight guys in the box, the eighth guy is the runner's guy. And they like the eighth guy to be the corner, to tackle the big, strong running back. And if you're not a willing tackler, it's going to show up. And so those are the things that um, we have to prepare for, and it's, it's important. And offensively, um, you know, we have to beat press coverage. And they bring some, they bring some pressure. They bring five, six-man pressure at time. Every once in a while, they throw all the cards on the table and casino you and bring seven guys. And you got to get rid of the ball, and you got to beat man coverage. So they're, 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 sound, they're a sound football team. They really are. Coach Jack Harris, Sun Devil Source. Uh, you guys have been up and down in short yardage situations this year, but against USC, I'm pretty sure you converted all of your third and ones, third and twos. What do you see in that part of the game, and how do converting those plays kind of impact the flow in your offense? Well, obviously, it gives you confidence. Uh, it, 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 
and it makes me relax too because then I'm sitting there as a fourth and one, right? And everybody's saying, go. And, and you got to make the calls, depending on what, you know, where the ball's at on the field and the game and the situation. And I kind of like, you know, when it gets to fourth down because I kind of know what I'm going to do before it happens. We, we, we kind of have a plan going into it as the field is being, you know, changed offensively. There's certain situations that Coach Likens knows that, hey, I'll tell him on the phone, look, we're in, we're in goal territory. He knows that means, okay, if it's fourth and whatever, it's a fourth and three in a certain situation. He knows way ahead of time that you get into fourth and three, so you, you already got an extra down to get to fourth and three because you get, you get to go for it. So, But that, you know, that puts anxiety in your belly a little bit because I'm waiting, you know, it gets to fourth and it's on me. I got to tell them, hey, we're kicking it or we're punting it or we're going, but they know well ahead of time, but then I still can make the call if we go backwards, so it's good to see, you know, just think if we didn't make that third and one. Hmm, that's been interesting. You punt it, go forward on fourth and one there again, what do you do? Right, that's, I know what they do on PlayStation. They go. <laughs> Coach Tim Reagan again, um, we do a little profile on Antonio Pierce. Yeah. I just want to get your thoughts, really a kind of a two-part question. The job he's doing as a coach, as a mentor here, and then also the job he has in front of him as the team's recruiting coordinator. Yeah, well, he's juggling a lot of balls and um, uh, doing a great job, uh, Antonio. We go way back. Uh, we worked in the studio together, and um, it's kind of unique because when you work with guys, you, you know, you, I've known him before. He was coaching, you know, he was playing when I was coaching, and um, I know the history of Antonio, and, and I can remember there were times in the studio um, we would talk, you know, and then he started coaching. Long Beach, Long Beach Poly, you know. Coaching too now? He said, yeah, I'm coaching. He's talking about where he's coaching now. He said,